things we need to be doing. We need to quit trying to impress God and we need to please Him. I think I, I quoted that out of somebody's book. Hallelujah. Quit trying to impress God and please Him. And I believe if you please Him, He might be impressed with you. He said, um, he said, let me give you a prophetic word. It just begun. All right. All right. He said, I ain't going to try and pack it up. I ain't building it all up. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, it just begun. I took that for renewed faith ministry as well. Right. It just begun. All right. What God has in store for us, what God is going to do through us in this region, in this, region, in this area, it just begun. He's a chief apostle. You at the age of 62, and God is saying, it just begun. Hallelujah. I know there was another man. He was 75 years old, and it's just begun. Began. What a mighty word. So uh, today we have a special guest here. My friend, my brother in the Lord. He's an author. He's a songwriter. He's a publisher. Hallelujah. He, 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 he can sing a little bit, I think. Hallelujah. He may praise the worship. I hope he can sing. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. He also is a sound uh, engineer, praise God. And uh, he does a little bit of everything. Hallelujah. But he, one thing I like about him, he's a great man of God. A man of integrity. For the little time I've known him, Hallelujah. He know how to bring forth the word. He know how to open it up and reveal it to us. He do what God tells him to do. When he's on assignment, he sticks to his assignment. So what I love about him also is that he teach. He break it down so he can understand. He ain't going to grab his ear today. So y'all ain't got to be worried about no ear grabbing today. Hallelujah. But if he grabs his ear, that's fine too. He going to make sure you get an understanding first though. Praise God. He brought down here uh, his wife. Uh, sincerely, praise the Lord. Let's give her a yes, Lord, hallelujah. Hallelujah. All the way from Carterville, South Carolina. He also brought uh, the young lady, uh, that's Demetria. Hallelujah. Praise God. She's out there where the books are. And uh, without the service, you get a chance to patronize them. Amen. But uh, I'm going to turn this part of the service over to my friend. Before that, let me just honor my wife. Thank God for her. Amen. Hallelujah. I ain't going to try and build it 
up, I'm just saying that's my wife. That's my sugar booger. She hates when I say sugar booger. Hallelujah, that's my sugar booger. That's my sweetheart. Love of my life. I thank God for her. Hallelujah. She's the mother of my children. I thank God for her being a part of my life. And most of all, being a part of this ministry. She helps this ministry greatly. But today, it's not about us. It's about the word. Amen. And so today, I want you to stand on your feet. As I introduce to you, I present to you, none other than Pastor Sebastian. Let's give him a hand. Yes, God. Good, good father. That his 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 being a parent is super exceeding. 
keeps our every expectation in the natural. I just keep getting this picture of this a little girl, four or five years old, praise God, and, and her father comes in from work and she lifts her hands, praise God, so they didn't pick her up. What, what, whatever's going on with him is irrelevant at that moment because the only thing that matters is her reaching up for it. Yes, God! Let God use you. Let God use you. Amen. Have your way, God. Yeah, yeah. Yes. 
there's a roar in the belly of the saints in this place. And I don't know what's holding it. I don't know what's holding it. Oh, glory. I don't think the enemy has any to be in the beat of the Holy Spirit. So this suggests to me that you might be holding it. Glory. Hallelujah. Just let it go. Just let it go.
just let it ride. Don't don't let it, let it be determined by where you've been, what word curse has been spoken over you guys. Just let it ride. Mark it, whoever is your writer, please let them write it down. Then on July the 17th, 2016, that word was spoken to those young men. Please. I can't keep up with all the stuff I want to say. But I'm going to preach. I promise you. Let God use it. There's a grace on this house. It's going to sound rough, but if you know me, you mean, you'll know that I'm not mean on purpose. I'm never mean on purpose. <laughs> but I really do walk in another level of consideration, compassion, and love. So hear me by that spirit, please. There's a grace on this house that's not being tapped into. There's a grace on the anointing that's on this man and woman of God that's not being tapped into. There's a willingness. There's a loyalty. <laughs> but then there's a disconnect from where they are in the spirit and what, uh, what is available in the spirit of this ministry <laughs> and where the people are in the ability to reach it. I don't know what put it there. I don't know where the hes hesitancy comes from. I don't know. I don't know. But it has to be broken through. Glory. Let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. Glory. Give me his, let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. Who remembers Bishop David Huskins? Bishop David Huskins, uh, yeah, well, he, he, he was a, 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 a bishop over a fellowship of churches that was worldwide. Uh, his, his main church, his main campuses is about 20, 25 minutes from where our church is in our area. Bishop Huskins was powerful. He was a revelator way before his time. And uh, he committed suicide two years ago. He committed to a suicide two years ago. He actually wrote a suicide letter that winds up went out online and everything. <clears throat> and his struggle was the isolation, the burden of what he held and what he carried. Amen. Now, of course, those that are watchmen and intercessors, the first thing we began to deal with was how is it that the people in his congregation didn't cover him on a level that his mind could be kept? I'm not playing the blame game. I'm not saying it was their fault. That's not what I'm saying at all. Amen. But then God showed me the answer for my own education, for my own knowledge. This, this is what he gave me the answer. There was a disconnect spiritually. He drew numbers. Church full of folks. The church had a campus out of this world. Beautiful sanctuary. You feel me? But there was a disconnect spiritually from where he was at and where the membership was at. This is the evidence of that truth. The young man that took over the church had been with Bishop Huskins for 20 years. 20 years. At this time, the young man that took over the church is in his early 40s. So he, he, the majority of his adulthood was spent serving this man God. He had been under this ministry for 20 years. And the first thing he did when he took over the church was drag them back into tra tradition and religion. God says, that's exactly what I was telling you. That man was there faithful and loyal as a tiger. He participated. He was on, went through all the ministry training and read the pastor's book and never got the mandate that was on that man of God. And now that church that went from four or five hundred members, two or three services, pastor in two communities, pastor in two different churches in two different communities, to less than a hundred of people attending. There's no way in the world a foundation being built like that should have been squandered. Because somebody sit there for 20 years and never got it. Yeah, it's, it's worth crying about. That's tragic. That's absolutely tragic. It's available. You don't have to be disconnected from it. Taking anything from you, just want to get everything to you. Glory. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Yes, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father God. As I stand before you in an empty and willing vessel, asking that you would fill me.
and use me for your glory and your glory alone. It's in the mighty master's name of the Jesus the Christ. We do pray and say thank you. And if you agree, say amen. 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 Thank you. You can have your seats, please. We're good. I'm going to use the path from the time, Heaven. Bless it. Hmm. Where's the intercessor that I spent a lot of time talking to the last time I was here? The year she's stood out there with the table now. She's off today. She's she's, she's not here. She's with her family. Oh, okay. Bless her heart. I'm looking for her. And she's been on the task. She's been the watchman. Glory be to God. Uh, where, where the rest of our intercessors? Who else is an intercessor? Okay, one. There's a couple more in here. Okay, two. Yeah, where y'all here to be assessed? Three, eight, man. Let me, let me tell y'all something real quick, and this is not related to our conversation, but we're going to go here real quick. It's not related to, related to our conversation, but we're going to go here real quick. Um, blessed. Intercession has to be treated like leadership ministry. It can't be the backside of the desert ministry. Come on. It needs to hold the prominence, the development and training that ministerial offices hold. Because it's a leadership role. Amen, somebody. The responsibility that's held is great. So the way we deal with it can't be minimal. Come on. Amen. Amen. I'm going to leave that right there. <laughs> we'll deal with it some more. Amen. I'm trying to settle myself. I'm trying. Amen. Glory be to God. Yes. Let's let's go. Let's go to Exodus. Exodus chapter three. Exodus chapter three is one of those texts that's an anchor for a lot of my ideology. Exodus chapter three, verses one through five, for the sake of time. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, Midian. And he led the flock to the back of the desert and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire from the midst of a bush. So he looked, and behold, the bush was burning with fire, but the bush was not consumed. Then Moses said, I will not turn aside. I will now turn aside. Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight. Amen. Amen. While the bush does not burn. Come on. So when the Lord saw that he turned aside to look, God called to him from the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, here I am. Then he said, do not draw near this place. He called him and then told him, hold up, stand back. Right. Take your sandals off your feet, for this place where you stand is holy ground. Amen. Moreover, he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Is that not three generations? Amen. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the oppression of my people who are in Egypt and have heard their cries because of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. <clears throat> For the sake of time, let me skip over to chapter 4, beginning there at verse 10. Because there's a lot of discourse going on there with God and Moses. Same conversation. Beginning there, verse 10. Then Moses said to the Lord, Oh, my Lord, I am not eloquent, 
Neither before nor since you have spoken to your servant. <laughs> Rich, right? But I am slow of speech and slow of tongue. So the Lord said to him, who has made man's mouth? Or who makes the mute, the deaf, the seen, or the blind? Have not I the Lord now, therefore, have not I the Lord now, therefore go, and I will be with your mouth and teach you what you shall say. Come on. But he said, oh, my Lord, please sin by the hand of whomever else you may sin. Send anybody else but me. <laughs> So the anger of the Lord was kindled against Moses, and he said, Is, is not Aaron the Levite your brother? <laughs> I know that he can speak well. <laughs> Come on. And look, he is also coming out to meet you. When he sees you, he will be glad in his heart. Now you shall speak to him and put his, the words in his mouth, and I will be with your mouth and with his mouth, and I will teach you what you shall do. That's enough reading. I want to talk about for just a few minutes why I have time. The identity connection. All right. The identity connection. Amen? Amen. Here it is that we realize this special relationship <clears throat> or association between identity and assignment. Far too often, often in ministry and in church, individuals are trying to function the assignment without clarity on their identity. Glory be to come God. On, come on. There's a grace that's granted when you flow in who you are and what you're supposed to be doing. All right. Amen, somebody. Well, let me work it out. Moses is a prince of Egypt. He's spent the first 40 years of his life being developed for leadership. But now he's in Midian tending sheep. It's not a bad thing, but it's not where he's supposed to be. Come on. <laughs> Glory be to God. I'm going to tell you something awesome as a side note. Even when you're out of position, if you operate in excellence, God still puts a grace on everything you touch. Yes, yes, yes. If God is still your motive, he still puts a blessing on everything yes, you touch. Y'all yes. don't hear me. Yes. Jethro, his father-in-law, is not actually the name of his father-in-law. Habab is his real name. Jethro is his title, which means prince or priest. Somehow, while on the run, <laughs> come on, <laughs> he follows right into a good job <laughs> and an awesome marriage. Yes. That's important to understand because sometimes we relate the success that we have in life to where we actually are in our relationship with God. Mm -hmm. Amen. But here is the evidence that his being out of position hindered his relationship. Because even though he's been developed as a prince, he sees himself as a pauper. Y'all oh, <laughs> don't want to talk to me, but I'm almost there. He, 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 he doesn't see himself according to his preparation. He doesn't even really know how his preparation as a prince is going to work toward his destiny and his promise and purpose. Yes, yes. Come on. Hallelujah. That's good. So here it is. So here it is. So here it is. There is this relationship, this connection 
between identity and assignment. The importance of this connection can never be underestimated because God made us for agreement. Yes, it is. You were made for order. Mm -hmm. Our being able to operate, operate in chaos is an aspect of the condition of fallen nature, not our greater truth. Mm -hmm. Come on. Man was made to exemplify the order of God in the earth. Yes. All right. wow. <laughs> order is sick. Signified by what? The operations of successful systems. Your entire being, your phys physiological, psychological, biological being is what? Orderly arrangements of systems. We know that, that, that these systems have been intelligently designed because they can be what? Quantified by mathematics. Yes. Come on. Boy, I wish y'all could come on in. Yeah. If that's not a perfect picture of order, I don't know what is. Yeah. Then Jesus comes on the scene and says, What? I have a bride and she's a body and a building. <laughs> Are we here? Yeah. And both need systems of order to function the way that I designed them. All right. So if I'm going to be beneficial to the order, beneficial to the systems, I need to be in order. Come on, come on. That's the right. first place of that order is the harmony within me. Yeah. That my mind, body, and soul can line up. Come on. That my spirit, mind, and soul can line up. Yeah. And they can be in agreement with who I am in Christ. Boy, you preaching already. And the reason why God has said it so and done it so is because he, he, he's a God of completion. When he breathed breath into man and he, he sit down to rest after the sixth day, he was done. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So he put principles in order for us to be able to flourish in. All right. He's not augmenting change on every condition and situation and circumstance. No, he established systems and the people who benefit the most out of those principles and the operations of those systems are the people that get in line with them. All right. <laughs> That's right. Man, I wish y'all would come on in. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to walk out the text here in just a second. Prayerfully, it, it, it won't take too long. Amen. Do we see how powerful this becomes? My lining up with God that I may be able to be aligned within me Amen. and then I can manifest my assignment and my authority. Come on. Amen, somebody. Yes. This is the equation. So I can be in agreement with the kingdom. Yes. I can be in agreement with the will of God. Amen. I can honor why God made man in the first place. Yes. Come on. You do know that we're a part of a management team. Amen. That's right. Oh, God, I can't chase that trail. Let's get to the text. Here in the text, we see something significant right off the rip about this condition with Moses. The first thing we see that Moses is his Egyptian name. Mose, a Mosiah, is his Hebrew equivalent to his Egyptian name. This is the thing you're going to love. Moses means delivered. The Hebrew equivalent of his name means deliverer. All right. Oh my God, my God. <laughs> he was born to be a deliverer. Yeah. When he was delivered, they named him according to his condition. Oh, come on. There you go. But his greater truth was what, who he was born to be in predestination. Yeah. The assignment God had on his life. It's the first thing we can see just in his name. Amen, somebody. I, I, I want to suggest to you, this may feel like conjecture, but work with me. When God calls me, says, Moses, Moses. Oh, come on, come on. Both. It could mean deliver, deliverer. Jesus, Jesus. I'm just talking about the identity connection. There you go. Ooh, come on. The sum total of your experiences, your life, has been a preparation to get you to your promise. Hallelujah. Come on. 
Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. The very first thing we see that is, is Moses is in this equation, praise God. And we know the story. So I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time with background. We're going to drive because y'all don't watch the movie. Y'all don't read the book. You know, been the Sunday school lessons. Hallelujah. You know the story. So here it is. The very first thing that we see is he's tending the sheep. Amen. It's a good job he got. He's married. He's happy, praise God. But he messes around and walks up on a miracle. And he paid attention to the miracle, the movement, and the message of God. He pays attention to the miracle, the movement, and the message of God. Oh, man, y'all want to hear me. Because in today's context, we tend to leave out part of the equation. We got folks that chase miracles, but don't chase the movement. We got folks that chase miracles, but are not attended to the message. Yes, come on. But you really kind of need all three to be activated. All right. All right. Here he does. He, he, he walks up on a bush that's burning. That's not the miraculous part. The fact that it won't burn up is the miracle. Amen. Amen. Say that again. Y'all, that's a, that, and we can pull some of that good old preaching out of that, right? Because God wants to set you on fire. But this kind of fire doesn't hurt you. It draws attention to you so that you can draw glory for him. Ooh, come on. Come on, Lord. Speak. He, he, here it is. He's looking at a burning bush. And he's looking at a, 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 a product that's made to be burned. And it has benefits out of being burned. But, but it's not being burned up. Yes. Come on. He stops and recognizes this must be a God moment. Yes. The movement of God. We have a big problem in the church because not enough people is chasing God's movement. Amen. They want to be where the celebrities are. Yes. They want to be where the crowds are. Yes. They want to be where the big buildings are. They, they want to be where the event is, but they're not chasing the God moment. Come on, come on. They're not chasing the movement of God. And I'm going to tell you something. This situation is happening in secrecy on the backside of the mountain. Backside. A lot of times God ain't moving in the masses. Backside. Come on. On the backside. And because we're chasing height, we miss God a lot of times. Right. We got to shift our motive to only being in the pursuit of what God is doing. Yes, 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 Lord. I know we want it because Bishop Moyne had a song a few years ago that said, Lord, whatever you're doing in this season, don't do it without me. That was an attitude of heart to chase the God moment. Yes. And we appreciated it. We received it and we responded to it because our emotions were connected to it. We're designed to chase God. Yes. Okay. Come on now. Come on. A follow through might have been lacking. Amen. Amen. But at least we wanted it. Yes. <laughs> now he's attentive to the message because either an angel or the voice of God starts speaking out of the bush. I can't argue your theology with you right now. I got to get somewhere. Because the text first off starts saying that there was an angel of the Lord speaking. This may have been uh, uh, the pre incarnated Christ, or some call it a Christophany. Amen, somebody. That's the, the, the nomenclature, angel of the Lord may represent that. Amen. Amen. But, but, and so then when he says, Lord, is that you? He may have still been speaking to God. Come on. Come on. But I can't wrestle with your theology right now. I got to get somewhere. All I know is there was a voice coming from a mirror when he starts listening. All right. Get the message. Glory be to God. There, there's a voice coming from, there's a message in the mirror and he starts paying attention to it. He's not overwhelmed, overwhelmed by the spectacular sight. He's now attended to the message that the miracle is speaking. Amen. Woo, that'll preach. Amen. Aren't we almost there? Yeah, Amen, somebody. This is where he starts. And, and then, 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 then the thing that we have to recognize is there's a progression in his call. Mm -hmm. Amen, somebody. The first thing we recognize about Moses is why he's on the back side with the sheep. He's prominent in his current position. Yes, he is. Come on. He's flourishing where he's planted, even though he's out of place. Come on, that's preach right here. He's content with where he is, mm -hmm. even though it's not where he's supposed come to be. Come on, come on, stay okay. there a while. Stay See, there. a lot of times ambition makes us uncomfortable. 
Selfish ambition makes us uncomfortable. It, it pushes us into having an attitude or an agenda. And we'll justify it and legitimize it by God. That's right. But here it is. God's deliverer. This man is going to be one of the most prominent leaders ever spoke about in Scripture. And here he is. is just as good with leading sheep as he is men. Oh. Preach, Holly. Okay. 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 Ooh, wow. I like that. This is why God called him humble, because Moses wasn't beating down doors trying to get an opportunity. Come on. <laughs> he flowed and flourished where he was. Right. I know that sounds rough, but it's, it's right there in the text. Yes, it is. As a matter of fact, you heard me read the text. Moses says, God, whoever else you can find. That's right. Happy where he was at. Oh, he was happy where he was at. Now that could be a problem, but we're gonna deal with that. We're gonna deal with. It. We're gonna work that out. He's right. he's he's happy, but we do know happiness is not the end game. That's right. That's right. Jesus. <laughs> Glory be to God. Here he is. But there 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 there, there is progression in his call. The first thing we did we we recognize is that <clears throat> he came. That's huge. Mm -hmm. He came. <laughs> oh, y'all yeah. got empty seats in there. Why? There's some people that ain't came yet. That's right. That's right. Come on. Come on, somebody. It's a, so we can readily see the importance of the fact that he came. Yeah. Uh huh. Amen, somebody. The, the next thing, the next thing, the next thing that we saw is he was called Moses. Moses. It says that God saw him stop and start looking, and he called him. All right. Mm, come on. It was always God's plan, but Moses' will had a part to play in it. Oh, come on. Yeah. Come on. He was born to be a deliverer. This moment had been predestined. Yeah. All right. But God didn't call him until he stopped. Yeah. Until he came. Wow. Exactly. That's right. Come on. Amen, somebody. Now, hear me. Let, let me let me put this, let me put this this disclaimer in there. This, this listing, this, this plan, this strategy that we see walked out and worked out in Moses' situation is not a methodology or a model that we have to necessarily force ourselves in. Amen, somebody. Right. But we can pull from his moment. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Come on. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> he, he came, then he was called. I already told you now, God starts saying your name twice, that's significant anyway. It kind of looked like, like Jesus talking to Peter. Yeah. Peter, Peter. <laughs> Anytime God double up on your name, something serious about to be said. Right. <laughs> it, it is. It, 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 it really means this. You need to pay special attention to this. All right, come on, Charlie, Charlie. <laughs> you feel me? It's real, right? So, so, so here it is. So here it is. So here it is. He's called, and then he was. Consecrated. God calls him and then puts him in a process. All right. You can't step on this ground. You're not prepared yet. Jesus. Take your shoes off. Mm -hmm. This holy ground. Come on. This is a picture of what? Consecration. Mm -hmm. Amen, somebody. Not, 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 not only is he consecrated, praise God, but then he's conditioned. There's a difference. And here's where we're going to spend the most time. He's consecrated, and the reason why the consecration is important, praise God, is so that he can be open for the conditioning. Mm -hmm. With his feet open, uncovered, he's vulnerable. Yes. Yes. That's okay. right. Come on. Nobody never hit their foot on the bed in the oh, middle yeah. of the night. <laughs> stump your toe, come on. Come on, stump. I mean, that excruciating pain. Yeah. yeah. His, his feet being uncovered. This picture of consecration is about his vulnerability. Ooh, not on. about his qualification. Yeah. He can't be conditioned until he allows himself to be open and vulnerable. Oh, he's yeah. speaking now. Come on. See, all these walls we have in our spirit because of brokenness and hurt and unforgiveness and yeah. resentment, all these walls is keeping our condition limited. Yeah. And you can't fulfill the mandate that is on your life until you allow yourself to be conditioned. Yeah. Let me show you his conditioning. The very first response he has is an excuse. Amen. <laughs> what if they don't believe me? Huh. 
Who should I say sent me? I'm not eloquently spoken. Send anybody else other than me. I got a stuttering problem. Making excuses. Are y'all are here? He starts coming up with excuses because he needs to be conditioned. He doesn't see himself for who he is. Come on. Come on. He doesn't see the fact that he's adequate. Wow. He doesn't see the fact that he's worthy because God has already made the assessment before he made the call. That's right. That's right. Come on. <laughs> so how can you be so sure? Because the, the assessment was made before he made the essence of who he was. The assessment was made before he made the essence of who he was. Oh, Lord, I like talking about this right here. The fact that he was a deliverer was his truth even in the womb. Mm -hmm. When he was spirit, before he was put into flesh, he was a deliverer. That's right. Already made him that way. Come on. You know how many sperm he outran to win the race of, 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 of being conceived? Okay. Come on. Come on. He was born a willow because he was born with a mandate on his life yeah. to be a devil. Come on. Come on. <laughs> he was born to a family of Levite priests. Yes. Now he's under the, the tutelage, the government of what? Another priest. Yes. yes. Come on. He's been raised up in Egypt. He got the finest education. He, he speaks two or three languages at this point. Come on, y'all. Yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. Come, on. Come on. He's been through just enough struggle in his life to appreciate his experience with God. Amen. Wow. Do you know he's still dealing with guilt and shame from murdering somebody? Mm -hmm. Come on. Gotta He's tried to be a deliverer in his might. Come on. See the stuff we walked through. I wish I had time to unpack all the examples and the illustration of our personal lives, but I bet we can put ourselves in the equation. Yes, we can. Yes. Yes. Go back to Egypt. Are you for real? Yeah, Do you know I'm a wanted man now? Yeah, come on. <laughs> Amen, somebody. Amen, somebody. Here it is, he has to be conditioned, and the condition is he has to come to himself. He has he has to start seeing himself like God sees him. That's right. Come on. Come on, somebody. He can't stay comfortable in Midian. That's right. This was just preparation ground. That's right. Come on. Now it's time to walk out the destiny. Yes. Thank you. His excuses didn't have any effect on God but to make him mad. <laughs> High point. Wow. His, his, his attitude might have really been sincere and genuine. A lot of times we're operating in false humility. Mm -hmm. We know we want to be seen greater than how we act. That's when you know it's false humility. You're worried about what people going to think and what they're going to say. Come on. How your gifts will or will not be received. Come on. Come on. That's right. Come on, somebody. That's and so we act like we ain't enough. That's right. That's the truth. But then in the back of our mind, like, I could do that way better than what she yeah. doing. <laughs> it's still on in Yes, it Lord. is. <laughs> are are y'all with me? Yeah. We have to break down the witchcraft of false humility because true humility is way more empowering. Yes, it is. Amen. Amen, somebody. Bishop to see something on somebody. Mm -hmm. And we're not talking about the man of God, God trying to call people. We're talking about him being able to speak into your life a position in place that you might not be in a mindset to agree with yet. Yeah. Okay. That's right. That's right. And you won't even be able to receive it until you submit to that level. Hindering the faith. Amen. Amen told individuals, myself personally, I've experienced this on occasion, see something on my like, look, go ahead and start reading accounting books. Familiarize yourself with church finances and church administration. There's some certificate class I can give you a website for you can start taking for free. You're a kingdom financier. Wow. Come on, Glory. come on, come on. Glory. Can't see themselves can't there yet, because right there in that moment, they're broke. That's right. That's right. They have no money. But I'm telling you what thus said the Lord. Yes. All right. 
And I'm giving you the grace to start operating in the preparation. Yes, but yeah. you can't even open up to see yourself like yeah, that because you're giving that. yourself yeah. by your condition. Come on, connect to that. Come on. But the condition is only the facts. Mm -hmm. It's not the truth. Come on. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Are you with me? Yes, Lord. You, you see how this goes? He, he has to be conditioned. Or <laughs> better yet, what I should have said was reconditioned. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what needs to happen. A renewal. Renew. Come on, that's right. <laughs> Hallelujah. Here it is. He's he's been he's been he's been he's been he came. He was called. Yes. Amen, somebody. Is, is, is that about right? Yes. Then, then here he was consecrated. Yes. He's he's been conditioned, mm -hmm. but he's about to be commissioned. Oh, mm. oh glory be to God. But there, 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 there's something else that has to be important to this commission is connection. Because his lack of understanding God's conditioning in his conversation with God, God now has to connect him with a partner. Oh, wow. Come on. Y'all don't hear me. Y'all don't hear me. <laughs> Some of us are arrogant enough to believe we don't need nobody else. Ooh, you better stay there a while. Jesus. Preach that. Yeah, yeah, that's what we do. Come on. <laughs> I, I remember being 20, 19, 20, 21. I knew everything already. <laughs> everything. Everything. <laughs> oh, y'all don't know no more. Come on, good 19, 20, 21 year old. Yeah, arrogant. Come on. And you can't tell them yeah. nothing. And don't mess around and let them be a little educated. Come on. Come on, I read two or three books. Come on. Oh my God, I've been there. I, I ain't talking about me. I've been there. Yeah. I wish I'd have wrote down twenty percent of the wisdom that I threw away. Oh, wow. <laughs> because I knew everything. High minded. My capacity was full, so I couldn't receive nothing else. Jesus. So you missed the connections. Oh, missed the benefits yeah. of the connections. Yeah. Miss the benefits of the submission to relationships and the exchange in relationships. Miss the prominence of partnership. Miss the opportunity that development granted me. You're going to be, watch this, watch this. You're going to be a prominent leader. I'm going to even call you a prophet. You're going to be a priest in your operation of how you deal with the people. But before you become that, I'm going to send your brother Aaron with you, who's already a priest. All right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Help him out, Lord. One day, you're going to be speaking to the people directly. Yeah. But until you get to that place of confidence, I'm going to send a statesman, a spokesman with you. Yeah, teach it. Watch teach Aaron. It. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Come on. <laughs> he, he's connected, and it's for his benefit. Yeah. It's not designed to work against him. It's Come the design to free him Come to on. him. Oh, yes, Lord. Come on. When you're under right leadership. Yes. <laughs> and you you guys, let me go ahead and throw this in bonus-wise. You guys are under right leadership. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Yeah, you can say amen. It's okay. Ain't amen. nobody going to get in your pocket because I said that. Amen. You need to free yourself to realize that when you're under a genuine, sincere spirit, that doesn't mean we get everything right. Amen. That just means God has a right to correct us. Yes. Amen. Amen. Come Amen. on, say that again. Amen. That's right. This man of God is open. We have conversations on the phone, praise God, and, and, and he's open to hear God. Yes. That's huge. Mm -hmm. Yes. M most of us pastors are only open to teach. That's right. Not to learn. No. Come on. And if they are in a, a learning posture, it's so that they can take your revelation and go preach it. <laughs> Hot time. Hot time. It's real life. Yeah, they, they may have they may have platforms and stages that you don't have yet, and so they'll take your depth that they didn't worship for and go preach it and wow people with it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Come on, come on, come on. <laughs> Let me tell you something about Revelation. It costs. That's right. And you're going to either pay on the front end or the back end. Yes. Give him your worship. 
I don't, y'all ain't in me. Mm-hmm. You can get an involuntary brokenness on your face and worship and let God yield it to you, or you can steal it and go preach it, and then you have to be responsible for it because it came out of your mouth. Yes, Jesus. come on. That's a word, right? There. Preach, Holly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Preach. That's real stuff. Preach. That was for free. <laughs> Connection is powerful. God has commissioned them, and now you have to connect them because of what he needs. That's why you have to open your spirit up to the place. Come on. Y'all going to love this example. And, and this may be a little rough around the edges, so don't get too mad at me. Pray for me. Amen. How is it that Dr. Martin Luther King had such a significant, prominent role? He has such a great and grand vision. And all of the hundreds and thousands of people that followed him, there's been nobody to pick up his mantle. Come on. Amen. Come on. Come on. Can I tell you why? Because they understood his goal, but they never owned his heart. Yeah. That's true. And the individuals who actually did have his heart never functioned in the personality role. It's got the same thing. I function again. Glory be to God. Let me show you what that looks like in church. It's like the people that really love the pastor and they're really sincere about what he is striving to do and they really get it according to his heart, but they continue to wrestle within themselves on whether they're adequate enough or not. Preach. And God is crying out to tell you, I positioned you to make a difference. Glory. Amen. These guys are with you. These your sons are, are, are they related to you? They, they with you. They've been with you. with you. Amen, somebody. Sell out to it. It's awesome. One of the most powerful things that can happen in a worship service is when there's agreement in the word, praise and worship in the atmosphere and the voice. Come on. Amen. When there's agreement there, man, that is one of the most powerful positions in this moment. Yes, Amen. Amen. Own it. It's cool. <laughs> you feel me? You have a prominent role that's so much bigger than dollars and cents. Come on. Amen. Are you with me? Yes. Intercessors. Own it. If he's not giving you things to pray about corporately, ask him. Push him if you have to. What's the goals for this season? What we're trying to accomplish in it? What, what's the warfare? What we battling against? Pastors are so guilty of holding stuff because of our confidentiality. And we, we're secret with people's struggles. But you don't have to tell what individuals are going through. But you can see a corporate climate. That's I remember right. that one time, man, everybody in our church was having car trouble. Come on. That's a corporate climate. Yeah, you ain't got to say, sister, so-and-so car just got repossessed. You tell the intercessors, there's something going on about transportation. Pray. Y'all don't hear me. Yes, God. Come on. That's it. And, and, and then let me tell you something. Oh, God. I'm, I'm, I'm done, really. I'm finished. I'm just throwing some stuff out there now. Yeah. Amen. Let, let, me, let me tell you something. Corporate intercession is not about you here praying about your cousin. Amen. <laughs> Say that again. That's why intercession be, is crippled. Because we ain't here praying about personal stuff. We should be praying about corporate stuff. Yes. Come on. We should be praying about the assignment that God has given us collectively. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. You pray about folks' groceries while you're at home. When you come in here, y'all need to be praying about the same thing with the same voice. Yes. And agreement with the apostolic voice. Yes. yes. And we break through in the heavens. One more, one more for, for prayer. Come on. You're not praying to make something happen. You're praying in agreement with what already has happened. Yeah. That's right. God has released it. Come on. Come on, somebody. It's yeah. in agreement with the vision. God has released it. But there's warfare that's keeping it from connecting. The other side. Come on. And what you're doing is adding strength to, to angels that's yeah. battling. There you go. Yeah. You're adding strength to the spirit realm that's creating yeah. the condition in the atmosphere for the release. Yes. Come on. You can't do that and everybody here praying their own thing. Come on. You have to be strategic and have a front line that's going directly into the same point of the battle. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Come on. Amen, somebody. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. I'm Glory. Good word. Good word. Amen. Oh, uh, if you come take some money. Amen. <laughs> oh. 
Come on, let's give God a praise.